Empezamos a hablar de un evangelio liberador, de un Jesús que We began to speak of a liberating gospel, de un Jesús of a Jesus who came to be with the poor, of a Jesus who said in his gospel, blessed are the poor, blessed are those who suffer. But how could I convince them that the Jesus we were called to proclaim is the good news when these peasants start to express to me their sufferings? They explain how on their backs they carried the weight of the government, the weight of the rich, and even the weight of the church itself. I lived for some 36 years in El Salvador as a priest and never had any problems. And since becoming Archbishop, many governments have come and gone. And I've gotten along with each and every one of them. I don't ask for more than I should. I'll ask the government to find someone a job or help to get someone out of jail. But always with the humility Christ taught me. Now, there may be problems. But it's like between children and parents. If you speak with confidence, like son to father, you get what you want. But if you're arrogant, you get nothing. The church was identified during this time with those in power. It was a church of social power and economic power. And it had a social position. And then came this terrible slap in the face, a liberating gospel. And in the light of this liberating gospel, the people began to interpret their reality. Many catechists learn to read in order to study the Bible. These religious leaders became community leaders. They built schools, organized neighborhoods, and helped with projects like getting drinking water. It was these leaders that began being persecuted. Some began to disappear. Others were tortured. And still others were killed outright. Some were taken in the middle of the night and never seen again. In many regions, a lot of priests have left out of fear. But I wouldn't say there's been any real persecution in Guatemala. Many priests were guerrillas at the head of their squadrons. I call them ingrates because the Indians and peasants see their priests as a god. They believe in anything the priest says and follow them. The priests use the Indians as cannon fodder, taking advantage of their ignorance. What is our sin? Why are they persecuting the church? Are they persecuting the church because it has helped these people? It has raised their consciousness and has promoted their interests. We have moved them to think, to analyze, and to become aware and to organize themselves. In all different ways, we have tried to help the Guatemalan people.
we believe that God has everything under control and that he puts rulers in authority and he takes them out. He says in, in Timothy to pray for all rulers and magistrates and all governors so that we as the people of God can live in peace. So what, what, what we see is that we have a faith that extends to God that he will cover the situation and we're faithful to him to pray for these men in office. Y sobre todo, nosotros, donde tenemos una gran injusticia, donde somos directamente frutos de su desarrollo. Ahí viene una serie de frustraciones nacionales y frustraciones sectoriales. Y eso lo que exige son cambios. Pero cambios dónde? Cambios en las caras, cambios en las paredes o cambios en su corazón. Cristo Jesús, me entregué lock, stock, and barrel. ¿Cómo se dice lock, stock, and barrel? A ver. Bueno, totalmente me di mi vida a Jesús y la Biblia dice que la imagen de Cristo Jesús se está perfeccionando en nuestras vidas. Tenemos que esforzarnos a entregarnos ofensivamente a la batalla espiritual. Estamos en batalla y tenemos nosotros que tomar una parte muy fuerte y por esto nos ha llamado Dios.